Life and Chicken, Gary Stevens. Hi, that's City Hall. <laughs> okay. Are those recorders on? Yes. Okay. So is this one. All right. Are we ready? Yes. All right. I entertain a motion to reconvene from the executive session, noting that nothing was discussed other than 1015-1H7 meeting subject to the attorney-client privilege pertaining to threat or pending litigation, which the public body is or may become a participant. I'll make a motion to reconvene from executive session. Noting that nothing was discussed at the 10 one h 7 meeting subject to the attorney-client privilege pertaining to threatened or pending litigation in which the public body is or may become a participant. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Moya? Yeah. Commissioner Radius? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Duplantis? Yes. Uh, next on the list is discussion for fiscal year 221 budget. Michelle? Good afternoon. Um, so in the last work session that we had, Commissioner Maya presented um, this uh, list of questions. So I thought it could be beneficial for everybody to get the same answers. So everybody's on the same page. Um, so I'm gonna go through these and I have handouts and we'll talk about them as we go through them, okay? So his first question is, is the budget with layoffs? Yes. And I think Mark has something to add about the budget, right, for the Layoffs. Yes, so in, in regard to the layoffs, we've been talking about this. It's been a working budget in progress. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were happy to announce last work session that instead of the 10 and 12 uh, full time layoffs, uh, we we're able to get that down to just one full time employee, employee being laid off with uh, two part time employees being laid off permanently and an additional eight full time employees going down to part time. Um, the other thing I'd like to discuss with you is, with this, that's, that's three people that will not have a job with the city anymore, potentially, if this all goes through. Um, I would recommend, uh, we've cut some vacancies at the library. I don't know how you all would feel, since we're on the hiring freeze, we haven't added any additional positions. Um, adding one part-time at the library, they are shorthanded uh, once we get to opening, and for safety concerns, not leaving just one employee there at a time. Um, we would reduce the hours, be closed an additional day, uh, but add one part-time, and these three individuals would have the first uh, chance to apply for that job. We try to hire internally first, advertise internally, and try to get one of them to fill the vacancy. Um, there's also another vacancy, I believe, at the senior center. So in reality, we have the potential, um, even though they may go down to a part-time position, to not uh, lay off them completely, they'd be, be able to have the opportunity to apply for that job. Um, so I just wanted to see what you thought uh, about that to add that part-time position. The other thing we were looking at doing is um, possibly reducing the hours at City Hall. Now that we've been uh, shut down for COVID, there are some things that we've noticed on where some waste could be cut. Um, and one of those could be at City Hall. An example, instead of be open uh, eight to five, five days a week, we could be open 10 to two, five days a week. So that's four hours instead of eight hours. So uh, that would leave uh, room for reduction in the future. Um, I, I hate to be blunt, but in reality, moving forward, we're gonna be in the same position next year. I just think we need to chip away at it instead of uh, just trying to lay off a whole bunch of employees. I don't think that's the right way to go. I think we need to do it in phases, but knowing what's coming next year, it's another dollar jump in minimum wage. Um, it's something to start planning for ahead of time. Instead of being reactive, we have the chance to be proactive and uh, start looking at how we want to plan our future. Did you say at the library, go over the library again, you say that. So the library right now, they had two positions, and this didn't count the, the vacant positions we had. And in the previous budget meeting, we had voted to cut all the vacancies at the water department, at the library, and we didn't go into too much details, I guess, on these specific locations other than those two, because it is dealing with personnel. Um, but since there was already two open positions, maybe we could open and one of them part-time, correct. And we only use one part-time, replace one. With part -time. one part-time. And in return, like I said, these three employees that are potentially gonna be laid off would have the first preference to apply for that position. They currently have the library director and the part-time person. Correct. That's it. That's so all they have. Which would bring up the concern that there may be somebody by themselves. 
sometimes. But the public utilizes that library a lot because of the internet and everything else. They go into these computers. I agree. That's why I that's guess, what you're saying cutting down on the time. Correct. And since we went on the hiring freeze and those were essentially those were cut already, I'd like to come back to the commission and ask, would we be able to open a part-time library position since we're on a hiring freeze? With the but giving those three people the Correct. opportunity to take that one of the three that might get laid yeah. off, yes, sir. Give them that opportunity to take right. one of your positions. We brought that up. Right. I think you know that should happen already instead of bringing in more people. Let's give them an opportunity to keep their job. Two out of the three is going to be able to stay if they, they choose to apply. Yeah, right. with the with our library being the only public library in the county, is there any way we could partner with the county in the funding of the library? It's always worth a shot. We just have to bring that to the county's attention and ask them. Because the county only gets it twenty eight hundred bucks, I think. Twenty eight hundred in it. Um. Oh, you're, I think they give a donation. Yeah, twenty eight hundred. Something small. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not. It's not just the citizens of the Chicken Carry that utilize that library. It's a lot of citizens from across the county. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, well, I see people doing their unemployment and stuff yeah. like that. People that don't have access anywhere. So my concern was the cutting of the hours. Yeah, if we can explore that, I think I'd like to see that as well. And, and, and maybe they can pitch in for this employee. The cutting of the hours we're talking about going to the two slow stages Sunday and Monday. Everything else will stay the same. You mean Monday is a deal that we keep? You mean cutting the day off? Or yes. Closing, 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 no services on Sunday or Monday. And then they'd be open Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so we Friday, and Saturday. We have it. Probably it'd be better if we had Monday open because that's usually some people go in and they do their filing for unemployment and stuff. We never have. What about Saturday? Is that a it's open? Saturday, so per state statute, I think I brought this up maybe two work sessions ago. You have to be open a certain amount of hours, nighttime hours as well as weekend hours to accommodate the, the community. And so trying to give them their weekend with their yeah. two days off, Sunday and Monday. Absolutely. So then Sunday would be closed. I don't see a problem with that, but I do see it. And Monday. What is the scenario with a half day on Monday? Scenario, I mean, we can make it work. It's just there may be a shortage on employees. And that's what we're trying to do is allow people to still take their leave off when they need to and still have ample coverage when needed. And, and it's easier to me on a, on a five day work schedule than adding another five and a half, six day schedule. Understand. And then you're talking about City Hall. You're talking about City Hall cutting a party. What are you looking at City Hall? 10 to 2. Um, I don't know. And then I should know better, I guess. But for the gas company, I'm not sure how many hours they're open. But I know um, it, it's something that has brought light. It's, it's come to our attention, I guess, with COVID that. We may not need to be there. It's just potential cuts. It's just ideas. It's nothing I'm asking to put into effect right now. It's something to consider for the future um, because it's we, we need to be creative in a town of our size. Where can we eliminate some waste? So you're saying that most the city employees will work only four hours? I mean, they're up here at the uh, front end? So you're home? Just for the... Uh, the clerk position for the uh, cashier position. That would be my intent. That would be what they would cut them down to four hours a day. We could. But the, but there would be someone in the building answer phones and such. Oh, absolutely. Hours eight to five. Absolutely. It's just, just I, I what guess we're doing right be... now. It's just yeah. um, the way the way it's been with COVID, with utilizing the Dropbox. You know, everybody's already been doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, the exception would be when we have to open to maybe help them fill out an application, turn on services, they don't have access to a computer. Now, uh, I actually don't think it's a bad idea, but not everybody, if they're needing to fill out an application or something, can be up there between 10 and 2. Would they be able to set up an appointment through City Hall at least? Yes. I'd say so. To be able to come in and do that? Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. As long as that's available uh, as well, you know, that that's a... Not so then, it's not something to take off the table. So then we're looking at their girls in the off on, on the front office uh, going part time. Is that most of what it would be potentially? Potential. So then you're looking at 20 hours a week. It's something that we're looking for, for looking next year. forward into for next year because it's going to become a concern. It's going to become an issue next fiscal year. 
So this ain't something coming up on July 1st. No, no. And, and it may be a little bit premature to talk about it, but I'm just trying to put in perspective. We need to be proactive for next fiscal year already. Uh, even though we're not talking about FY22, I mean, it's gonna come hit us quickly. We need to, we need to stay ahead of the curve instead of reacting when it's too late. Yeah. It, it is quick, it is hard. So, so I mean, I'm going back, I don't think we've answered your question. You asked if we can go ahead and fill a part time library and a part time senior center. Is that correct? Yes. If they're needed, I mean, that, that having someone there by themselves is definitely a safety concern. What is, library, what is yeah. the part time senior? What's that? What's that position? It is a, uh, it's a cook position, a, an assistant cook or part time cook. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I like food. <laughs> what's, the, what's the hours? I might be looking. <laughs> okay, so I need to move on because we yeah. don't have yeah. that much yeah. time and I have a lot to cover. So um, the second part of A is is the 400000 entered as contingency funds. So in fiscal year 2019, we changed the contingency fund down to 290000 to Very help. Well. Decrease the deficit, so it's not four hundred thousand anymore. But yes, the contingency money is in the budget. <clears throat> okay, so um, the next. So if you want to look at your your next sheet, the long one. This is the actual budget report, line by line. I'm going to need these back at the end of the meeting. These are confidential. The budget's not approved. Huh? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um. So, Commissioner Moya wanted to see um, revenue and expenditures by department, by fund, yes, to match to the group summary numbers and include the cash balances. I'll get to the cash balances in a little bit um, because I normally don't have it on this report. So, I'll, I'll show you that and how they interrelate. Um, and then you wanted it subtotal by departments, by general fund, special yes, revenue. Yes, I don't subtotal special revenue I, um, I subtotal each fund um, previously the way it was done in the old system and with the other finance director he did do it that way but when we got the new software it affected the way we split up the cash amongst the funds so you never brought it down to you so you don't everybody has a piece of the pie yeah. and so like for example fire mm -hmm. is in special revenue mm -hmm. And so I cannot mingle their cash with general fund. So no, I have to can, show it separate. You, yeah. And so therefore I don't subtotal special revenue in the budget. But sometimes uh, the, the special revenue is part of their budget because that's what we're budgeting for the year. And then when you request a new budget, the difference. Right. So, so then let, it throws it off. Well, let's go through this and then we'll see okay. if it answers that, that, that question. That was my question. Okay. Because I couldn't make heads or tails of what the information I had. Okay. Because so, it was way off. So I'm hoping that with all these reports, I'll be able to explain it as we go through it. And you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about when we okay. get there. You see, we're doing costs and everything else. I need to see a whole picture and the money, even right. the grants that are coming in mm -hmm. and everything else. Uh, and not one part and only the part that's coming out of the general fund or the other aspect part, because the budget starts with the beginning of the year. It even does. though we might be able to carry, but you still have to come in because you budget from year to year. And that's why we're, we're, we're assuming that we will the expenses will be for that period of years. Right. So I, I think you're requesting what Rochelle saying, correct me if I'm wrong, Rochelle, we'll still get you the answers. You'll see the numbers that you want. It's just in a different format than previously presented. Right. So okay. at the very last page on this budget report, you'll see highlighted at the bottom is um, the total budget being in a deficit of $682,690. That is um, the new well, numbers. Where you're at, I was just I was looking at, at the, the very, very last, last page. page. All the way up to mm -hmm. page twenty. Yes, page twenty. Okay. Down to the end. So this one has the total of all the revenues, <clears throat> the total of the expenditures, and total surplus or deficit. And then you wanted the variance, and so you can see the variance in the last two columns. Variance from fiscal year 19 to fiscal year 20, 20 yeah. and variance from fiscal year 20 to fiscal year 21. Now we're looking at this. It's, it's called deficit. Yes. So we're looking at 658 in deficit. Is that what we're talking about? 
Um, no, the 658 deficit is a variance from fiscal year 20 budget to fiscal year 21 budget. Yeah. So fiscal year 20 so budget was an, um, at this time, it shows a deficit of 24,116. So it's basically taking the 682, taking out the 24,000 gives you the 658. That's the difference between the two budgets. Yeah, over the years, yeah. Mm -hmm. a lot. A and lot. so if there's a particular department that you have a question on, we can talk about that real quick if you'd like. Well, I was looking more at the department was was with the finance and legislature. That was one of the okay. departments that I was more. So um, I couldn't get a clear picture of it because it seems to be very okay. open. So the legislature is on the um, this bottom half of page one and the beginning of page two. That's the legislative department. And so you'll see that in 20, we budgeted 1,259,662. And in 21, we're budgeting 1,349,731. So it's a difference. We've increased it $90,000 this fiscal year. For next fiscal year, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then you had a question on which other finance? Yeah, finance. OK, so finance is on the bottom of page two, in the beginning of page three. And again, budget for 2020 was 356,980. For fiscal year 21 is a budget of 409. For a difference of, we've increased it by 52,000. And I'll tell you the majority of that is because um, I have moved the payroll clerk under the finance department. So she's no longer under HR, she's under finance. Because payroll and budget, they go together. When she pays our taxes, when she it has it affects our bank statement, and so we have to work very closely together to make sure that that match. And oh, sorry, um, we have to work very closely with her to make sure that all the totals that she's paying match, and somebody's reviewing all that. And well, that was per the, should always be under finance. And that was per the auditor. So, and that will help clear up our binding also. So that's the reason. The, um, the budget for finance went up. <coughs> Were there any other departments? The other thing is the complaint, I, I recall a gentleman coming before us, I, I don't know what the department is, and he was saying, uh, and this is one that even Senator Comfort tried to help us with, and that was on how we could, how we can work with our street department and, and our biggest problem, and that is people are really concerned about their streets, you know, and that's one of the areas. Uh, the gentleman that came in, I don't know, uh, one of the department heads said something to the fact is that the shortness in his department contributes to his inability to provide the adequate maintenance for the roads. So uh, that's, and I know we're cutting, but at the same time, so we didn't cut anybody from the street department. No, I understand that, but he's already saying that he's at a skeleton crew. So. Right. And the street department is funded by the gas tax. And so that's on page, let me tell you, that's on page nine. Um, that's the gas tax, and that is where their salaries are funded from. And as we know, the gas has prices have been down, so um, hopefully they'll come back up now that the summer's coming and people start traveling. But we normally budget. Um, about 170,000 to receive from the gas tax, and then we transfer in about 70,000 to help offset the cost. So the majority of it is their salaries that takes up. They do have some money for street maintenance. Um, as you mentioned, Commissioner Moya, in the last meeting about the infrastructure money, yes, which we'll get to. That was one of the areas that's going to bring up. And we'll get there concern. in just a little bit about the cash on that one, but um, we could. Um, look into utilizing some of that money to help this them. This seems to be one of the biggest problems we have right now. That's I what agree. I'm looking at. That might be some kind of revenue we can get into what we call the the difficulties we have. Somebody's trying to get in. Oh, oh. Tell me has to be here for roll call. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I have your stuff right on that front seat up there. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to be locked up. Your... 
So, yes, no, we that's where I, that I was just trying to see where we could find funds. Yes. That seems to be the number one complaint now with the uh, right with with the public. And not only that, but then uh, I know that our it's it's a new era now. But one of the things is uh, Senator Campos wanted to work with us with the state providing us some of the DOT or whatever you call it, high grade or whatever, in working how we could provide some funding and other stuff that we needed. Uh, and, and that's one of the biggest cries we have in this community mm -hmm. right now. I mean, anything you say about a progress you're doing, they say, well, why don't you just take the money and do it on the bottles? And I can understand why, because right. it's, a, it's, it's a disaster right yes. now. And maybe we could do get some out of the capital outlay of the ULEG and, and utilize some of the so I don't know about touching the Ute Lake, but no, I'm not saying that part because we do have to have the 245. But the other revenue coming in because yes. we have to start uh, in many ways addressing these issues because if this uh, our streets get too dilapidated. Uh, we might as well go back to the old west without paving. Right. So I'll get to the cash again okay. in a little a little bit. Um, I so kind of want to. The department has. Uh, Two hundred and forty thousand per year is that their budget? Uh, two hundred and seventy thousand. That's the revenue we expect to receive from the gas tax. Okay, so you said a uh, hundred and seventy thousand. I'm sorry. 70, I'm sorry. Two seventy. So then it would be two seventy from the gas tax, and then we oh, add the seventy. Oh, two seventy. You said a hundred and seventy. Yes. yes, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So you'll and see total revenue. Say, we're expecting three hundred and forty-five thousand. Four hundred. I mean. It's total uh, right there. 340. Yeah, 345,870. Okay, that's where it was getting thrown off. I said 170,000, but it's 270,000. Because I don't have time to really examine this. Well, and that's something we could. After, after it's approved, but and after the final budget's approved, then I can give these back to you. Yeah. After DFA finally approves it, and that won't be till um, August. August. So, so September, the other thing, with all of this, if, if we have concerns and that's where the commission has the authority to determine how we want to move forward as far as operations, we could lay off more people if we wanted to, to have the proper equipment to pave these streets. The thing well, is, I we got to determine do we want the manpower or do we want the equipment. Right now, we can't afford both. No, and I understand what you're saying, but I'm also pointing out that with the infrastructure money that we have, let's see, we can utilize some of these to, to accommodate our needs in our community, as well as some of the suggestions by Senator Congress. We don't have to be defensive of saying, we're gonna throw everybody out of, of a job. That's not what, we're, what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how to solve our problems so that the community can see that we are trying to work with what assets we have. And that's the only thing I'm saying. Which we have, and, and that's the other thing. So with that infrastructure money, that's been used currently, and I, I think I we discussed it last meeting, to fund some of these second street projects, whether it's for, for water projects, that's our city match, because we don't have just a whole bunch of extra cash sitting around. So we've been using that infrastructure money to go towards our pledge for some of these grant funds. Especially if it is a street project, <laughs> second street. I work with uh, Vicki Strand at planning and she tells, you know, what the percentages versus water versus streets. So streets, obviously, as you see, they don't have money. So mm -hmm. then we tap into the infrastructure to offset that yeah, cost. That's, to that's the road. Saying, we're going to have to look for more soft money somewhere. Right. Well, and, and, and like I said, Senator Congress gave us some good, good suggestions when we had our meeting with him. And he said, let's work with the, I'm pretty good with the highway department in Vegas. Let's see what we can do, how we can work. So that you can accommodate because that's what he heard from the complaint of the people that right. was here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next one um, again because we're getting short on time. Um, the next one you have um, on number three: provide report of transfers from the legislature department to the department they fund. Um, I was this one here. I kind of got confused on your request. Um, because you're requesting transfers, but you refer to page 45 in the audit, yeah. which page oh, 45 in the audit is the do to do froms. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know if you wanted transfers, which is what I gave you, um, or if you're looking at the do to do froms. I was looking at, at the, when I was looking at the transfers, I couldn't in many ways understand some of the transfers. Okay. That so, was the biggest problem I had. So this next sheet, 
the next little packet that you have. Yeah, because these are all clear. the transfers. This one? Yes. Okay. So these are all the transfers between departments. So I totaled them up as you see. So one thing for DFA, um, when I report to DFA, all of our transfers have to equal zero. Otherwise, I cannot submit no, that's my what, report. No, that was a question I had in the meeting. So all my transfers have to equal zero. That's what I was having the understanding. Right. So they well, all have how to do you? Be, they have to be in and out, and they have to all total to zero at the end of the page. At the end of the year, they have to. No, at the end, like when I'm doing my budget, everything has to equal zero. There can't be any, I can't even submit my report if they don't equal zero. So if let's take section one, the top one. Mm -hmm. So this one here is the debt service. So these would be loans. Mm -hmm. um, any of the numbers, like, so the first three are the expense that um, we charge to the department. So the top one is recreation. The second one is water. And the third one is wastewater. So they all contribute to pay the loans. And then the bottom ones are all the where they get transferred over to that fund as revenue to pay the expense. So the revenue offsets the expense. Um, so whatever the cost is, that's how much has to be transferred from those departments. And you'll see that it totals zero. So the revenue equals a certain amount, the expense offsets it to come to zero. And that's what I mean by they have to be zero. They have to match. The next section is- well, Actually, you don't transfer until you have the expense in there. No, we transfer immediately. We start transferring July 1. Once I get these all set up, we start transferring. Every month we do a journal and we move that money. And so sometimes in the middle of the year, you'll see where we may pay, especially in December, we pay USDA loans. They mm -hmm. all come due in December. Um, so if you look at that particular fund on my budget report, they will be in a deficit because not all of the funds have been transferred from the department because we do it monthly, not all at one time. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I was having a difficulty understanding. So the one, if you're asking, if you were specifically asking about the legislature department, right. mm -hmm. which is the middle section, starts so that's with- one of the biggest, yeah, got it. It transfers to EMS. So you'll see the transfer to EMS. I'm budgeting 365. So okay. And then the transfer from general, 365. It's an in and an out. And then the next one is to recreation, then yeah. to gas tax, to dispatch, to airport. Um, and then there's one at the bottom or on the next page, which is for the senior center. Does this include the grants? Yep, the grants are in that second um, section. It says transfer to capital. Uh -huh. So you'll see um, where it says transfer from 1A economic development infrastructure tax. That's the one that we're pulling from that infrastructure money that was originally set aside for Ute Water and then we were able to utilize it. That's where we're pulling that money from and for those particular um, grants. Hmm. Still having a little difficulty understanding the accounting. So they all total zero. And then yeah. back on the third page, I actually provided a budget report from our system. And you will see also that these all equal to zero. At the very end, the report surplus deficit is zero. So those all have to be a zero. Well, that's one of the questions I have was a zero. Okay. I understand they have to be zero when you start. Mm -hmm. So you don't carry anything over? No, nothing carries over. But what I will tell you well, is- Well, I was looking at that budget, that's where I was having trouble. Go ahead. Okay, so what I will tell you, so let's take, um, let's take gas tax, for example, mm -hmm. just because that's one we've been talking about. So we transfer 75,870 next, or let's use this fiscal year, 70,727 for this fiscal year we're in. Mm -hmm. If the gas tax fund has any remaining revenue left over the because they did not spend all of their expenses that were budgeted right. that money will roll back up into general fund okay that's the question i had and that's what i was having the problem yes. in understand the budget you gave me because and that's the question i asked you the commission because it's supposed to 
revert back. Everything that okay. the general fund supplements. For some reason, the budget that you gave me or somebody gave me, I couldn't figure that out. Right. It's difficult in the budget, but... Because I was seeing where it was at the end of the fiscal years, it looked like it still had remaining money. Um, that would not happen, no. But so whenever you see a budget... Uh, and that's what I was questioning when I was questioning the meeting, is why it did not revert back to the general fund. And it does. I, and they, that's what I'm talking yes, about when I'm does. talking about a budget starting from ground zero forward. Yes. And, and that's what, but that it was doesn't start from so transfers check. start from zero. But the way you worded it, you mm -hmm. were saying that cash starts from zero. But no, no, cash doesn't start, start from zero because you don't deal with cash. You deal, well, you do, but in, in a different form. Right. Mm -hmm. So any money left over at the end of the year that they don't spend reverts back to, yeah, for that's example, what, that convention the center. I have, that's what the question I couldn't answer on them on your on what I have in the budget. So the convention center is funded by Lodgers tax. Yeah. If they don't spend all their money, it goes back to Lodgers tax. Okay, that's the question I could. That was the, okay. that was where I was having the most difficulty in understanding the type of budget the system you guys were using. Okay, well, so then hopefully that answers that question for you. Well, it'll make it easier for in case I read another budget that I will, I will what I'm reading it. <laughs> and then that will bring it back to the question then, because I, I, I couldn't figure it out on the budget you guys gave me. It okay. still showed that there was some money, but it was never. I mean, it was well, the never, budget's... and I, and I, that's what the question I had was that it was supposed to revert back to zero or back to the general fund. So there's two different things that you're talking about because whenever I prepare a budget, mm -hmm. like for this year, again, it's a working budget. It's constantly moving until you guys approve it, and then it's locked down, and I don't change it anymore until after June thirtieth. Then I start. Well, you can the legislation approve. I can't right now. Once you approve it tonight, yeah, I can't touch it can. until July. One after the fiscal year is over, then I will make my changes for the final end numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, when I provide you your budget throughout the year on a monthly or quarterly basis, they should still be zero the transfers because everything's still in, in and in out. But you're not going to see the reversion of that money back until I provide you the final budget in July. Then you will see the money getting reverted back, but you won't see that until July. Because we have to finish the fiscal year. Yes, you do, but you also, but uh, but it can be transferred if legislature approves to transfer. But why would we do no, that? No, but I'm saying don't say we can't. Yes, we can. No, what I'm saying is no. I cannot make a change to no, the budget. No, you cannot. But the legislature can. No, you cannot until July one, because once DFA approves it, it's locked in. I can't make any changes to that budget. But we get approval from DFA to do the locking. I mean, to to do in the July. Transfer. Yes, and in July. Uh, to July the first, we can. Yeah, but okay, so there's two different things. So in July, I'm finishing off the fiscal year. So on June 30th, mm -hmm. I will go back and make the final changes, which is the cash and reverting yeah. them where they need to mm -hmm. go. And then I also have to get approval for the new budget. So I have to show them what our ending cash is, what our beginning cash is, which should match. But once, then they approve that. Yeah, then once they approve it, then the budget returns back to the city and then we work with it. Exactly. And the, but, but we, we can't can do, do anything till they say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once they say we can, yes. under legislature, we can move, transfer that move again. Yes. Yeah, and that's what my question was. Okay, okay. yes. But and I'm, that's you, so we're talking about two in, different things. Yeah, yes. and that's where you come in and say, no, yes, we can't, because actually that gives Well, I'm saying after okay. the plan. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Um, your question on Section C was why are grants negative in the budget, negative 13484. Mm -hmm. Again, it was a working budget, so it wasn't set in stone. When it comes to grants, I work with Vicki Strand, the community development director, as to what grants are going to roll over to the next fiscal year. You lost me in the page. What? I haven't gotten to a page yet. Oh, oh. I'm going off your section C. C. Yeah. Well, I was looking for the grants. So I don't have the grants that are in the budget. Um, when I'm getting the budget together, I figure in what we have spent versus what we have been reimbursed. Um, so, for example, the airport capital, okay, which is so one of the ones you've listed, uh -huh. you wanted to know is yeah, airport 60, capital grant 60000 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We have not been reimbursed for everything that we have spent yet, so as a projection, I'm anticipating a deficit of 61497 because we haven't been reimbursed in this fiscal year. We will receive the money next fiscal year. So for next fiscal year, if you look on your budget, I'm showing a surplus for this exact amount. 
to offset the deficit minute, from this year. So then when you pay this bill, where are you borrowing the money from? So if they have because cash, you know, being the, if, yeah, go ahead. if they have cash available, then it will come from that. If they don't, then I would have to do a transfer from general to offset. So that. then the general fund reimburse back when yes. you get the money because yes. that's, that's the deal. Is, that's yeah. called a do to do from, and yes, they will get their money back. So then you won't show it, uh, a surplus if you reimburse. <laughs> I still fund. will show a surplus. Well, no, not in that case. No, no. Okay. only mm -hmm. if it's in a, um, if they have cash. So then for the miscellaneous grants, it's just the opposite. We've received, we've been reimbursed more than we've spent. I'm not sure how, but um, so I'm showing a deficit for next fiscal year as I'm showing a surplus for this year. So it will offset next fiscal year. For MAP and co-op, we have not spent any money or received any reimbursements, but these uh, projects require a match that I transferred from water and infrastructure, which is what we talked about. Mm -hmm. So that amount of 100,279 will roll into the cash for that particular fund. And next fiscal year, I will, I'm showing a deficit to offset the rollover. And it's the same situation for co-op. Airport capital is a grant. That was your question. Right. If it is a grant, it is a grant. Um, and we usually do have a match and we transfer the match from airport. And again, airport supplemented by general fund. So at the end of it all, it's coming from general fund. And how does that throw your general fund off? Because we already budgeted in general fund. Right. Because now you're borrowing to pay for a grant that we have not received the money from. Right. So it would be affecting our cash at the end of everything. It will affect our cash. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, wow. That's the struggle with the day to day operations and making sure that the department heads try to work within the means of the budget. Mm -hmm. No, no. I, mean, I, I know, but this is going to have quite a big chunk of money. And, and we're talking about already a huge string, you know. And okay. then we're borrowing this to lend to another department, I mean, to another situation. Then how do you balance what you need to be looking at? You'll see here in just a minute when we get there. Those are the questions. This is so, right. in this little section right here where you wrote in the audit cash and you have city cash at 9,522,913 which oh, came okay. from the audit mm -hmm. so this little next section of paper that I'm providing you mm -hmm. um, where is it? I want to show you that so Commissioner Moya one more thing oh, this one. Yes, that one. In the last commission meeting, in your comments, you mm -hmm. referenced, um, you were asking about the Princess Theater, mm -hmm. but you were referring to it being in the budget mm -hmm. and then saying that you didn't see it. So um, I did not spend that money. It is in a savings account, it is not in a budget. And you saw it right here on the audit page. It references right here in the First National Bank, Princess Theater. $4,595. Yeah, that's the one I was wondering, and then I could not, rem I just remember seeing it, but I did not uh, note it down, and I couldn't. Well, I did not spend it. It's still sitting in the bank. Um, but there was there. Okay, so it wasn't my imagination. Okay. But it was it was on the audit, not the budget. Yeah, it's on the audit. Yeah, it was on the audit. That's what, but, you know, I reviewed the audit as well as your budget you gave me, and that's where I had seen that 4594 and and I go like, I, I wasn't even aware that we had that kind of money for the Princess CA. It's some kind of a savings in there, just accrues yeah, very no little either. interest, very little. So you have a city cash amount of 9522913 So I needed to back into your number to see how you got it, which is what I did here. Mm -hmm. I took our bank balance as of June 30th, 2019, which hold on, was hold on, hold on. 8.8 .8 million. Okay, the eight, okay. And then I so added in there. all of our CDs, which was no, 864000 then I took out all the deposits in mm -hmm. transit and outstanding checks of 206. Gives me a total of 9,522,922. The spreadsheet you have is 9,522,913 for a difference of 963. Yeah. That is on the Princess Theater because the auditors, which probably they got their information from the bank, they reported 4594, but we have 4603. It's $9 off. Yeah, well, I wasn't even aware that was even money at the Prince Theater and sort of so the, the, the audit. And, that, and I didn't <clears throat> recollect I didn't make a note of it, but, uh, but that's why I brought it up. And the question I had was, wait a minute, you know. Okay, so I want you guys to remember this 8.8 .8 million. 
That's yeah. going to be very important in my next comments. So when I started as a finance director, we were in the middle of a fiscal year 17 audit that ended with a disclaimer finding. This minute, was, where are you at? This is my notes. I'm just telling you. Oh, okay. Um, this was not my audit as it was from a prior year. Mm -hmm. The cash was the reason for the disclaimer. After the audit was complete, I worked with a rep from Tyler. We paid for Tyler to come in and help me to get the cash straightened out in the system because of the way it was uploaded. After that, we were already into our next audit, into the next fiscal year. I worked very hard to get the cash correct in the Tyler system and in DFA. By cleaning up the cash, I was able to get us out of the disclaimer and into an unmodified opinion. After that audit was complete, I made the changes in the DFA system. I made adjustments in DFA in the amount of 2,407,774 favorable that was not previously being reported to DFA to get all cash reported to DFA to match what we have in the bank. Tyler, DFA, bank, and the audits all reflect the same balance. And that was my number one priority when I first started as a finance director. The next set of documents you have is the fiscal year 19. This is where I started working on the cash. So this is a cash report that um, I believe used to have to be submitted to DFA. Hold on, I'm gonna go behind here. Okay. So I got it right here. So it's fiscal year 2019 actual on the top. If you look on this first page, column L, it says estimated ending fund, fund cash balance, 8.864. That's the magical number. So I had to come into this report and I had to fix the cash balances to make sure that they were all correct to get them to that 8.8. .8. Then if you go further in, you'll see the next, this is the report from DFA. Now this shows fiscal year 2020, which is the current fiscal year yeah. we're in. Flip your pages over. No, don't go to the next one. Just go into the, go about four pages, five right. pages back. Yeah, hold on a second. I saw 2020 in the other one. So yeah, we're going to get to 2020 in just a second. Okay, so this is the DFA report. Um, so, and I changed all these. I had to make in the adjustment column, I had to make all those adjustments in quarter one so that the cash would reflect. If you go to the second page, if you well, add wait a minute. When you did the adjustments, what was wrong that you had to do the adjustments? Look on the next page. Okay. Because it's, if you, you look know, at the beginning, the reason why they, the way they are. if you look at the beginning cash, well, like I said, 2.4 million was not being reported to DFA prior to me coming. So I'm just getting it corrected. If you look at the beginning cash was 6.4, I added in the 2.4 to get to the 8.864 million. Mm -hmm. The next page. Is, well then, if this oh. is a, if that was not being reported DFA, well then why, why, what was the money being utilized? Was it just sitting there or what? I have no idea. It was prior well, to me. Because I don't understand because usually you have to be very accountable for all the money that's there. It was prior to me. I couldn't answer so the then, question. So if that wasn't budgeting, go ahead. Okay. So this next page of the bank statement. So this is a report that I provide yeah, to the auditors. Really yeah. mm -hmm. This is as of June 30th of 2019. On the last page, you'll see it says 8.864. So everything ties together to the 8.864, which is what we have in the bank. As of June 30th of 2019. So just for my understanding, so there was... 2.4 million that was unaccounted for. We don't know where it was. It was in the bank. It just wasn't being reported to DFA. It's always been in the bank. It's not okay. like it was just sitting out and all that. It was in the bank. It just wasn't reported. Okay. And I don't know why. Which is why we received a finding. That's that exactly why we received the disclaimer. Okay. Because they saw all that. Close. Which you went ahead and added that back into our reporting. Yes. And tied everything back in. Yes. Tyler matches. DFA matches, the audit matches, as you saw in that last section. Well, I mean, we have to section. have money in there. Why, why, was that, why was it there and why wasn't it in budget? That's an anything your budget is supposed to account for the money you're supposed to have. Your budget service. doesn't ma Your budget does not account for your <coughs> cash necessarily. Your budget is your revenue and your expenses. That's correct. So your cash is kind of just sitting On off the to the side. side. So then, mm -hmm. the so he had it. He had it. I, I couldn't even tell you. I know it's been in there, but he wasn't reporting it. That's all I'm saying. I can't answer for what he did prior. I don't know. 
It was well, not. When, when did you come on board? I came in in October of 2017. Okay. And when did you do? December of 2017. And this is when? This, when I fixed this, was in the beginning of 2019. So they went a whole year when you you, were, you, you didn't see it or until then or until the audit? No, well, I fixed it for the audit, but yeah, it took so a while. So a whole year on accountable. That's why I said I had to bring Tyler in to help because it was a mess. Such a mess. It took that long just to get everything mm -hmm. to get to this point. Now, that's why we commend her for her hard work and dedication and all that. That was a lot of work to get us in a, in a good state. Well, I understand that, but at the same time, I still have a time difficulty understanding your budget. So your question, Commissioner Moy, I want to show you something. On page three at the same report we're on mm -hmm. go to page three um go down to um in column g and it says 07-72 kind of like around the middle section page three on, on this thing you're talking about mm -hmm. does it have the numbers don't have numbers on g g it says 07-72 do you oh, see it? Second. No, I don't. Oh, okay. So join the okay, Now I have it here. Okay. Okay. So what are we looking so at? So that is your infrastructure fund that you're questioning how much is in the yeah. mm -hmm. infrastructure cash reserve. It is restricted, which you read that the last commission meeting. Right. Where is it? It's right here in 0772. And you'll see that as of 2019, there was a balance of 360575 in that part but the other part there's, there's still in here it shows the revenues and expenses too so this is all very much tied to the budget okay so we started with a cash of 141810 we received revenues of 291978 we spent 73213 i made a change of 218765 mm -hmm. and got the cash to 36575 I had to verify with multiple reports to get to those numbers. So I didn't just put it where I thought it went. I went back and researched a lot. So now we can go on to 2020. So this is the budget, not the actual, because we're still in 2020. So yeah. I can't give you actuals. Okay. But what I want to show you is. What a, well, we're running out of time. That's why I'm moving on. Okay. Um, column B, the, um, I'm sorry, column C, final uh, estimated beginning cash, there's the 8.864. Again, because that was our ending cash in 2019, so then that becomes our beginning cash for 2020. And I have also included at the very last page the budget re report from Tyler. And um, if you take, and you'll see right here the change in fund, 99277 okay. ties with the budget. Which one is it? Last page, page 39? 39, okay. You're so back. you see the beginning budget was 99277 Right. The very first page back again, change in fund, which was in, it says 99277 down at the bottom. So they all match. Oh. And then the very next one is the DFA report for 2020. This was the budget that was approved. Um, again, this is the same one I just, um, well, this was the first one that was approved. So it shows the six million four, and then in quarter one, I made the adjustment to get to the 8864. So just so you see how it was reported to DFA. Okay. Going on to um, now this fiscal year, 21, um, the first page is the report that I have uh, from BFA. 21. 21 starts with this. Here. Here, she has it in staff. Huh? Okay. Yeah, so she has it in order. Oh, no, I have got there all these. Uh, <laughs> That's why I told you not to take it out of order. Yeah. So um, this one here, um, where I have a projected beginning cash because I don't know what the ending cash is going to be yet. I can only project. Um, but I put in all the revenues and the expenses and shows our deficit of 682690, which if you go to the next page, 
It's the fund summary from Tyler System showing the 682, 690. The very next page is the same cash report for fiscal year 21. And 682, 690 is the change in fund. These reports all go together, they all match. Also, Commissioner Moya, yeah. you asked about how much is the U cash reserve if it's restrictive, which it is. It is in, it's on, um, it is on P. So similar to the same page, page three of which, whichever cash report you want to look at. Go back a page, Commissioner. I went back. I go back, what, yeah, go one more break. Oh, oh, then you need to go forward, sorry. One more after that. Page 30 and 35? No. no. Page, page three, 3 or 4, three, right there, Commissioner? Four. Okay. So if you look in the fund under joint utility water, in the middle, you'll see administration. Yeah. You see that 2.408311? Yeah. That is the leak tax money and it just sits there nobody touches that it's in a different yeah, cash yeah. line for no, water that. Yeah, a, yeah. Okay. okay so that and you kept saying that. it was 1.5 but i thought okay who said 1.5 you did when i questioned that no i've always said it's 2.4 i've always said it's mm, 2.4 so. um the next question you have is how much is the cash reserve for the new landfill and is it, is it restricted yes it's restricted same page, go down a couple of lines, you'll see sanitation, 08-75. I'm showing projection beginning cash of 957,435. Mm -hmm. So that money sitting there for the new cell, for the landfill. For the, for the new cell. Mm -hmm. um, also in the last meeting, Commissioner, you asked me about um, the CDs and the interest. Yes, because okay. we remember we also have a new Yes. Agreement with the F and B, and that where is that? Here's right. the next section right here. So um, the very first one is on for fiscal year 19. Um, I'm not there yet. I got her and stuff here because I couldn't stop trying to figure out what we're doing. The one was 630.19. Yes, 630.2019. Which one is it? Uh, Wait a minute. I got this backwards. Oh, here it is. Okay. Okay. Here it is. Uh, let's see. Local budget management system. No, that's not it. That's not it. It says everyone's federal credit union and has a list of things on it. Yeah, that's the one I want to see because we haven't been. Oh, here it is. Is this it? No. No. That's well called. It's its own little. It should have a paper clip on it. This one here. Right? Yes. Let me see if I can find mine. I kind of. Oh, here it is. It's on the bottom of the other one. Okay. okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. okay. Now we can, so wait, this no, is for fiscal year. Oh. Okay. okay, just look over Commissioner Bien Nueva shoulder. No, I don't want to see this. I want to see my <laughs> that one's it. No, that's it. You have no, no. Well, this says uh, yeah, see you because everyone tried to print. Oh, okay. I see here. It's very small. Yeah. Okay, so this is from 6 30 of 2019. So this was prior to moving the money around. Um, down at the bottom under the cash balance. You'll see a number 4,799. That's the total interest we received on the CDs that are not highlighted. So the ones that are highlighted, we actually receive a check from the bank for our interest. And I'll show you here in just a minute where that money is at. But 4,799. Now, I noted off to the side the CDs that say 90 days. Yeah. They were originally at 90 days when we switched over to FNB. I um, set them up to become to mature every year because we got a better interest rate. And I also have set up all the expiration dates so that they're stepped. So in other words, they mature at different times. So not all maturing at the same time. They mature at different times throughout the year. Um, the next page or the next couple of pages, next three pages are their report from Tyler. And um, so your, your question on the interest, yeah. so the very top one up here in general fund, interest on investments, we budgeted um, 11,000 and we received 11,323. 
So this is where whenever we receive any checks from the banks, we put them in interest income within the department that they belong to. Okay. Um, so originally the whole total amount was expected to be 17,480 and we received 21,275. That was for fiscal year 19. The next section is um, for fiscal year 20, which is the current year we're in. And as of May, we have received 7,687 on these particular CDs. But for the bank, we've actually received 44,577 on interest in the general fund bank account by itself. Well, okay. So we originally had budgeted um, 17,000 for all the interest and to date we've received 60,199. And this is good move? Yes, <laughs> it was a great move. Good move. Yeah, and this took a little while. Yes. It done. So there's that one. And Actually, if you look at what the FMB is giving us, it's almost at a CD level, uh, yes. which is a lot better than any other bank. Can give. And I'm not trying to be negative to anybody. Right. Think it's no, but increasing up to a year was mm -hmm. also helped. So, like I'm saying, on this particular one, it's 7,006, and we were at 47. So it was even better than 2019. Um, then the very last um, stack that I have for you is um, the letter that I sent to DFA. So I just have one more comment, and then I am done. And I just want to make sure that it's important to note that not only do I answer to the city manager and the commission, but I also have to answer to DFA. So if, DA, if DFA had concerns about our budget, they would be here and they would be asking questions. Um, I'm very confident in the budget that I presented and in the work that I performed for the city. So this is my letter of responses to the findings and everything that I gave to DFA. Okay. And that's all I have. Okay. I just like to thank Rochelle. She put in a lot of extra work to get all these handouts out. Like, oh, these are very good answers. And she'll have to review them until that can have time. Because really, uh, these are questions that cannot be answered unless they were brought to the attention. And I'd like to get an answer, especially some of these, the way the budget was, where I was kind of difficult to understand the going back to zero budget. Uh, because of what the budget I have was not what I was understanding. I even went to the audit, and that's where I got some of my answers. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, I still got a lot of questions, but I said I, I need time to it. Thank you, Rochelle. Thank you, Rochelle. Thank you. Uh, for getting and, down. And if we're using, if we have $60,000 of interest coming in, who would utilize some of these for some of the other expenses, or what do we use those 60000 well, I, we, we need to keep in mind also that the interest rates aren't going to be what they no, are. No, but right now it's, yeah. still, it's already it's already burned. We already have it. Since ago. But I think just because we accrue money doesn't mean we need to spend it. No, yes. but that's, that's, that if we accrue, we can also, uh, because we we're looking at trying to just provide a, services for the public. And we can be cutting and cutting services. Um, and then we the, the other thing, since we're 11 minutes over six, I don't want to stay too much in this meeting, but one thing I'd like to emphasize uh, from the city manager standpoint and for the finance department, anytime any of y'all have questions like this, we don't even have to do it in a work session. We can do it on a one-on-one -on -one basis if you have individual questions. That way we can knock it out and uh, we don't have to clog up too much of the run into the next commission meeting. But uh, Rochelle's door is always open. I'm always available. Um, that goes out to every commissioner. If y'all have questions, feel more than free to reach out to us on, on any given work day. Well, I like to have some of these stuff ahead of time so I can review it, and then I can ask you the question. The bottom line is sometimes when you get this stuff, it's just thrown at you, and then especially when you just follow the leader. And I have questions because that's my responsibility. I want to make sure that we work on a solid budget. I want to make sure what, how I understand the budget, how uh, things are going. And I don't like the idea sometimes it's given to me. And expect them to make a decision at the end of the day, at the end of the meeting. And I haven't even had time. And this stuff takes time to review and see the, the from transfers all the way to CD to interest. All this, all this is revenue for the city, and we need to, to look at it and look at the negatives that are being taken out of this year's budget to accommodate uh, uh, a grant or whatever. And this is what I what I don't get sometimes when they get me. To a meeting, I don't have preparation, and I'm giving them a stack 
or just giving a budget and say approve it and let it go. Well, and that's why I like to have some of this stuff ahead of schedule because I can go through it, digest it, and then I can ask the questions. I agree, but also when we request that information an hour or two behind ahead of time, we can't get <laughs> they can't. You got to give them time to gather. No, it all I, up. I I don't have a problem with it, but the whole deal is I have I do have a problem uh, sometimes because. Uh, Sometimes, listen, we don't get an audit report every, we don't get a financial report every month at all in this commission meeting at all. We should get what's on, what, uh, an update on what's going on. And, you know, that's part of We receive of the those bars quarterly, correct? correct? Quarterly, but usually monthly would be, especially when, it, when, it, when a budget is as tight as this is, that we could have some understanding of what's going on and how the operation of the city is. Because if you have the finance of the city, that is the key function of what's going on in this community. Okay. And that's how you can answer to the public. You can't answer the public four months later when you're going for a bar or another bar, and then meanwhile, people are, are at your door wanting answers. Agreed. And that's when we have right. that we expectation. We're already into our next meeting, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Right. Roll call, please. Commissioner Gamboa? Yes. Commissioner Adias? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Plantis? Yes. Commissioner Webb? Yes. Can you address on the hearing? Yeah, I have a lot. I'll go over later. Of course, I don't mind. I'll work.